Hey bird watchers, it's Robin with Creativity RV and I am back from my winter break. Now it's been three months since you guys have seen me and during that time I've had a bunch of cool travels, I've made plans for this year, made some changes like you might be wondering where I'm sitting right now and I also unfortunately have to tell you about one turd in the punch bowl. So the last time you guys saw me was about three months ago. I had been traveling through Wyoming and um, had just put out the 2023 edition of my book, Work From Home While You Roam, um, which was a lot of work because there's hundreds of resources in there. So I wanted to take a little bit of a break and do some traveling just for myself, which I did. And I'm going to show you guys some of the highlights and the coolest things that happened. But first... Again, I have to tell you guys about the turd in the punch bowl, which I don't want to do. I don't want to come back from my break and do this. But, you know, let's consider this a public service announcement. Um, it's the right thing to do, so I'm going to tell you about it. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I have endorsed a company called Nomad Internet for unlimited Wi-Fi on the road. And I used them for two years, and honestly, I really like the service. Um, I used it for about six months before I endorsed it because it was a little wonky in the beginning, but then honestly, it was great. And so the business model was that you could choose between Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile SIM cards and different routers on a membership basis and get unlimited internet, and that's what I got, and I recommended them and loved them. But then... Near the end of last year, things started to get a little bit weird, and I was home with my family for the holidays, and I started to get a flood of emails from you guys saying that your service had been turned off. So I went quick and turned on my Nomad router, and sure enough, my service had been turned off. And then there was a press release from the company making this sound like it was such a great thing that they were changing their entire format. Well, of course, I reached out to them right away and I'd had a relationship with this company, like I said, for a couple of years and could not get a straight answer at all on what was going on. And they said that existing customers would still have service. I couldn't find anybody that did and I did not. So I kept emailing them saying, can I get a meeting? Can I get a meeting? I want to understand this new service. Can we help my people? I'm forwarding emails to them. And it was just a clown car, honestly. Uh, they were tripping all over themselves. Um, they couldn't keep their story straight. And so I started to do some more digging. And I'm not going to bore you guys with all the nitty gritty. What I'll say is this. Over the course of two months, I probably emailed with the... CEO of the company um, about a hundred times. This is him right here. His name is um, Jaden Garza. Oh, I'm sorry. Wrong picture. I'm a terrible editor. Um, this is him. He was just throwing all kinds of stuff at me and making me insane offers to keep endorsing his service, which I turned down. I'm not going to disparage anybody here or any other influencer that still endorses them. Um, but if you guys are a customer or you're considering being a customer, do your research, is all I can say. Look them up on Reddit, for example. See who is working at the company and where those people are based. Look at the privacy policy and their terms and conditions and how they're paying their affiliates now. Um, I know that there have been a lot of big YouTube influencers that have been endorsing them in recent weeks. And, you know, I guess more power to them. Maybe they, they didn't do a deep dive like I did. Maybe it's willful ignorance. They were throwing me money that would have doubled my income, and I turned them down. <sighs> because <sighs> what I want to say is that my relationship with you, to me, is the most important thing, and my integrity is the most important thing. And I do work with other companies, and I do endorse companies, but it's after using them and loving their service and knowing that it's something that you guys can use. And I just don't feel that way about Nomad Internet anymore. But I am just washing my hands. Um, and I think it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with that company going forward. So now, let's get to the good stuff. Okay, so I had some wonderful travels after I last saw you guys in Wyoming, you know, I went through Grand Teton. I visited the National Wildlife Museum. <sighs> Loved it there if you guys haven't seen that. I met up with my friend Peggy. We went down to Flaming Gorge and into Moab. And I have to tell you, uh, we were in Canyonlands and we caught the funniest footage 
we were looking over the ledge of this one canyon where there were jeeps down below and they were going down this skinny little dirt road way far down there trying not to hit each other and then this happened so as you can see there is an rv down there and everybody was like ah uh, <laughs> should we help those people here he comes what do you think he's thinking right now it is wider than i thought it was but look how close he is to the edge oh my god oh nope they were rocking back and forth they looked like they were going to fall off the edge <laughs> i mean more power to him but i wouldn't do it oh my god look how steep it is Oh, yeah, it looked like it was sliding to me, too. I mean, you know, by the time they got through it, I think there were 40 of us looking over the ledge. Nope. Oh, oh my God, and he's just going to see them right now, right? Yeah, it looks like it. But then those Jeeps just built up steam, and they're like, ah. Oh. I bet that's at least an 8 or 9% grade. What do you think? Yeah, well. <laughs> All right. Oh, my God. Look at him rock. Oh, my God. I'm scared for him. Oh my gosh, people are nuts. But yeah, look at the RV rocking back and forth. Oh my god. Uh, I know that the ads show you these RVs and they go, oh, go anywhere, but that's not... <laughs> that's not really what you maybe should do. Buy that guy a beer and get him a new pair of underpants. Then I came back home for the holidays, got my parents a puppy, meet Teddy Roosevelt, our little rough rider. He's great. And then I left here to go to a meetup for my patrons that was in January in the Arizona, California area. If you're one of my patrons, you have been getting the play-by-play -play about what's been going on with me the whole time because I don't take a break from them. So this information might be, you know, a little bit redundant for them. But while I was on my way out to go see them, I got stuck in a traffic jam. And because of that, I got stuck behind a snowstorm. There was about 20 inches in Flagstaff when I was going through. So I got stuck in Gallup, New Mexico for three days. And when I got out of it... The roads were a mess. I was going four miles an hour for hours and saw about six upturned semis. But I finally got through it, got through Arizona, got out to the Blythe, California area where I got to meet my patrons for the first time. And here's some distant shots of that um, because I don't show anybody without their permission. I have to tell you, if you're looking for a crew of really amazing people, I could not believe how great these patrons were. They are just amazing, wonderful people. So after I left the patrons, I got to go off by myself a little bit, which was great. I got to sit out under the stars and just chill out. And then I finally made it to Joshua Tree National Park, which I've been trying to get to for years and just kept going right by it. And I'm so glad I saw it. You guys, it is an amazing place. If you get a chance to go, do it. I stayed at a Harvest Host um, going into the park on one side, got a good night's sleep, hit the park early, stayed in the park for about three days. Then when I came out of the park on the other side, I went to the 29 Palms Farmer's Market, which was amazing. It's on Saturdays if you guys get a chance to go that way. Then I drove out to the Mojave and stayed at another amazing Harvest House. Look, if you're not a member of Harvest House, the link is below for 15% off. They, um, are, as I've said a million times, the most smoking deal in RV life because you get to stay overnight at these amazing places and see things and do things you wouldn't do otherwise. I'm so excited for this year and for 2024. I almost can't keep it together because I've got some really exciting stuff coming up that I'm going to share with you guys. But I bet you're wondering again what rig I'm sitting in. So I'm going to give you guys a tour of what I'm in now in next Sunday's video.
So sorry for the teaser, but if I did it today, this video would be way too long. But last you guys knew I was in a truck camper, and I love the truck camper. And I got to go places in the truck camper that were more remote, and I didn't have to worry about the car or, you know, the clearance or anything. And it was a great boondocker. You know, every year in the fall, I come back and do my doctor's appointments. And so this year when I did that, it turns out that I need to spend a little bit more time um, in Colorado in the next few months than I was planning to, and don't worry, I'm fine. You know, I just need to have some routine maintenance done, you know, kick the tires, you know, get an oil change, whatever. It was really apparent to me when I was in the truck camper stuck in the snow that it was not a conducive setup if you're trapped inside for days at a time. And it's certainly not um, a vehicle that I want to convalesce in. My fifth wheel was still in storage um, as you might know, because you guys, I spent so much time renovating that when I was with Doug. And now, you know, Doug's not on the road. He's great, by the way. But the fifth wheel just feels like a lot for me to travel in right now. But if you told me I had to stop traveling, I would pluck out my own eye with a fork. So while I'm taking care of the stuff I need to take care of off and on in Colorado, I'll be staying in the fifth wheel. But I wanted something that I could easily hook up and go camp for most of the time by myself without having to ask people for help. The thing about the truck camper was if I kept the truck camper on the truck, it was fine. But when I needed to take the camper off so I could use the truck, um, I couldn't do that by myself because I couldn't get the tailgate on and off, for example. And I'm loving what I'm in now and I'm very excited to show it to you. And if you guys know my kind of origin story about how I started out on the road, what I'm in now will not be a huge surprise to you. Just wanted to give you guys an update. That's what's happening. I am good. I hope that you are good too. And I'll see you guys next week. Until then, I hope you're all having happy travels and be free.